Chapter 23 Lake Ontario at Last The lower half of the falls were hidden in mist with the rainbow across it. Paddle fell through the rainbow and went on falling. There was a swirling, boiling, hissing, churning, and then Paddle went under. Paddle had ridden rapids. There had been his first brook back in the forest, wild enough for its size. Then he had ridden the mad river and seen the rapids at the Sioux, so fierce that ships went around them. But these rapids, 30-foot waves rushed like shooting stars, turning inside out at every jump. Paddle flew up on a chain of wet volcanoes, plunged deep into submarine dives, and then sudden trips toward the moon in green rockets. Far from the falls, he came to the surface, rolled over and over down the Niagara River and into a whirlpool, where it seemed that all the water in the Great Lakes suddenly decided to run back uphill. Paddle bumped into huge timbers and trees that had whirled at a giddy pace for years, unable to escape. By some miracle, he got past this never-stop merry-go-round after a day, or maybe a week. And then at last, Paddle floated into the calm water of Lake Ontario. Black coots and white terns looked him over. Kindly people picked him up. Someone took him to Toronto, someone else to Kingston, and through the Thousand Islands. The dizzy fall lay behind, the sea ahead. Chapter 24 Along the Great River Paddle spent that winter in Canada with a little old lady who lived beside the St. Lawrence River near Montreal. Paddle joined her collection of Indian, French, and British curios of early Canada. An American boy visiting in Montreal liked to listen to her stories of the St. Lawrence. She called it the river. The Indian name for the river was Canada, she said one day. Yes, the French took that name for this country and called the river St. Lawrence. Nowadays, with canals dug around its rapids, some of the biggest ships come a thousand miles from the sea to Montreal. This is a skyscraper city today, but it started as a trading post. And Quebec was a trading post, too. See that piece of birch bark sewn with split roots? Two hundred years ago, it was part of a Huron Indian canoe that rode the river. Every spring, Indian canoes with many paddlers brought beaver pelts to the French at these ports. Yes, Frenchmen explored the river and the lakes. Champlain, called the father of New France, was the first governor of Canada at Quebec. He discovered the lakes and fought the Iroquois. The Hurons loved him, but the Iroquois hated all Frenchmen and, in the end, helped the English to get Canada. But whole towns along the river still speak French to this day. And Montreal is the third largest French-speaking city in the world. Yes, she said, peering over her spectacles. The river has made history. Wish I knew it all. Panel here comes from where the river really starts, in the hills above Lake Superior. Long journey. Come spring. I'll give him back to the river. 
and send him along to the sea. Chapter 25 Rivers in the Sea Spring came again with new leaves like crumpled lace in the maples, and Paddle was three years old. True to her promise, the old lady took Paddle to the river and set him free again. A few weeks later, Paddle passed the high bluffs of Quebec. Then came mountains. The river widened, and forests lined the shores. Strange fish swam by in water that was now salty. French fishermen caught long eels by thousands, but Paddle had not yet reached the sea. The river, now wide as Lake Michigan, ran into the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Now he encountered tides. He was stranded on a rock for six hours while the water slipped away. Then for another six hours the water rushed back swept him off his perch, and raced him miles upstream. He had been caught in the battle of river current and sea tide, a battle that has been going on endlessly since the world began. After this, Paddle was out of sight of land for months. He caught the Gulf Stream, a warm, wide river in the sea running from the Gulf of Mexico along the American coast and northeast toward Europe. Then he ran into fog and the gray shadow of land. This was Newfoundland, and here Paddle met another river in the sea, the icy Labrador current that sweeps down from the Arctic, hits the tropic stream, and causes fogs. Paddle passed fishing boats and countless fish brought to the famous Grand Banks of Newfoundland by the Labrador current. Paddle had reached the most famous fishing ground in the world, and he had reached the sea. Mm -hmm.